Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Unizor Education. Um, I would like to talk um, about heat transfer, uh, in particular one specific kind of transfer called conduction or conductivity. Um, now, this lecture is part of the course called uh, Physics 14, presented on unizor.com. Um, I do suggest you to listen to this lecture, uh, watch and listen to, to this lecture from the website um, unizor.com uh, because if you found it somewhere else let's say on YouTube for instance where it's actually physically stored um, you will have only this particular lecture uh, the website contains basically the course which means many different lectures logically connected to each other with the textual explanation of uh, each lecture um, which basically like a textbook um, with problem solving and uh, exercises and even exams for those who would like to challenge themselves. And um, the site is completely free, there are no ads, so it's better to go to the website. Now, speaking about heat transfer. Um, well, first of all, let's recall that heat is basically a molecular movement, actually the intensity of the molecular movement. So what does it mean that the heat is transferred from one um, uh, object to another or from one part of the object to another. Well, basically it means that intensity of the movement of the molecules is changing. Now, why? Well, it's actually very easy uh, to imagine. Um, for example, if you have a um, certain object and this thing is hot, um, let's say we are um, putting some kind of a source of uh, heat uh, to this particular site. Now, here we will measure the temperature. Now, initially, for instance, the temperature is different from this one. Let's say it's colder. Now, if we will measure the temperature of this site, eventually it will heat up basically to the same temperature as this one. Now, why is it happening? Well, it's a simple explanation, because if these molecules are moving very fast, they are hitting the neighbors, which basically forces those neighbors to uh, move a little bit faster. Those are hitting their neighbors, etc. That's how gradually the intensity of this movement causes more intense movement of this. And if, if this is maintained at constant temperature let's say we are putting some kind of a heat source like a flame for instance through this end so this end will always have the same intensity eventually these movements will force the movements of all molecules of the entire object to uh, to to move as intensely as this one which means it will reach exactly the same temperature because intensity of the movement is the kinetic energy um, of the molecules. The temperature is average kinetic energy, basically. Measurement of average. So that's how um, the heat is transferred in this particular case. Now, in some cases, um, that's the only way how it's, how it's transferred. Now, if, if, it's, um, if it's a solid, for instance, where the molecules are relatively um, uh, they, they take relatively uh, stable position, they're just oscillating around this particular position. This oscillation is actually is transferred from this place to this, and that is what conductivity is, is about. Now, there are other ways to transfer the energy. For instance, if you are boiling a, a pot of water, the um, hot molecules of the pot itself, the metal for instance, um, they are forcing the neighboring molecules of water to move faster and these faster mo uh, moving molecules are actually rising up and it's not just the movements is transferred, the whole molecules which are moving fast are transferred to the upper layers. So this is a different, this is a convection uh, which we will um, address in later lectures. So today we'll talk about um, conduction uh, only 
and this is related to again let's assume that this is oscillation of the molecules around their uh, some kind of a midpoint for each molecules there is such a midpoint and the distance between molecules again it's it's changing it's oscillating but within certain limits so this molecule I I is moving um, around its uh, uh, midpoint and it forces this molecule also to move around this uh, um, midpoint and if this one is um, uh, hotter moves much more intensely then this one will also be moving a little bit more intensely and then the neighbors and then the neighbors and that's how the heat is transferred so basically this is the I would say qualitative picture of how the transfer of the energy is is occurring so how can we measure um, the conductivity well basically the same way as I was saying um, I was presenting before in this in this picture we can hit one end of the object and measure the temperature of another at certain time intervals now that basically kind of gives you uh, uh, certain information about conductivity because if my other end of the object um, is heated faster that means the conductivity is better in this particular material now obviously everybody knows that if you put a let's say silver spoon into a hot tea it will uh, heat up much faster than let's say steel uh, spoon um, but if you don't know try it all you need is just a silver spoon and, and, and a steel spoon and uh, the steel spoon in turn will much faster heat up than let's say plastic or, or wooden spoon um, you might even not feel the heat if it's a wooden spoon for a very very long time so um, that means that the conductivity of silver is greater than the heat conductivity of uh, of, of uh, steel which in turn is significantly greater than the heat conductivity of the wood that's why the handle for the kettle let's say is made of wood or plastic and not the metal I mean if it's metal it means it will really heat up very very fast and you won't be able to hold it without some kind of glove or whatever so that's basically how we can measure the temp the, the, the uh, heat conductivity by the way the highest heat conductivity is uh, that of diamonds diamonds are extremely fast transferring the heat from one place to another okay now what's next next we will talk about um, different uh, measures of conductivity and we would like to introduce some not only qualitative but quantitative measure how can we actually measure it okay um, let's assume that we have a situation where both ends of the object are maintained at certain temperatures one is warm another is cold an example is if you have let's say the building wall so this is the wall this is uh, outside and there is a temperature of air which is basically maintained on this surface and this is inside this is a room and it has a temperature of room which is warmer so if this is the x direction I can say that the temperature of well this is zero and this is let's say this length is L so the temperature of zero is equal to T air some kind of a constant and temperature at L is equal to T room and temperature in between obviously is changing from a lower to the higher now what happens with the heat well obviously heat comes from the um, warmer to the colder side of the wall and it comes with a, some kind of a constant flow of heat um, that's why we have to really uh, heat 
the room uh, in winter when it's cold, at least in the northern uh, hemisphere. Um, so we have to constantly heat the room because the heat is always going away through the walls and windows, etc. We're talking about the walls right now. And for simplicity, let's consider that the wall is very much evenly made for the same material. So we don't really kind of have any complications of uh, having one kind of conductivity in one place of the wall and another in another. So the, so the heat is flowing constantly from this side to this side. Now, let's consider the rate of um, heat flow, uh, flowing uh, through this wall. Well, first of all, we obviously have to, whenever we are measuring something, we have to establish some kind of um, units, criteria, etc. So, our criteria is how the heat is going through uh, one particular area of unit of area, let's say one square meter or one square whatever. And we have to uh, measure amount of heat which goes through the sink during certain unit of time. So if we will be able to find out how much heat goes through the unit of area, this is our heat goes through the unit of area, uh, during the unit of time, that would be a good measurement of how conductive this particular material is for the heat, right? So, let's just think about, um, I would say, some reasonable assumptions. Now, they are not only kind of obvious from the logical standpoint, that they are also experimentally confirmed. Now, what if the difference between these two temperatures is greater? Do you think that the flow will be more intense? Well, obviously, because during the same distance we have to lose more temperature, which means more heat should actually go. So, there is a reasonable assumption that the flow of the heat um, will depend on the difference between the temperatures. So in this particular case, if I will subtract getting the difference between the temperature from the T room to T air, probably the greater this difference is, the greater the flow of heat will be. That's number one. Now, number two, we assume, and again, it's uh, experimentally confirmed, that this flow of heat is proportional to this difference, which means if this difference doubles, then the amount of heat will also, uh, which, which goes through this uh, unit of area, will also double. It's a reasonable assumption, experimentally confirmed. Now, on the other side, the thicker the wall, the longer it will take for the, uh, for the heat to go from the warm to the cold side, which means that the flow will be slower, which means it's inversely proportional to the um, thickness of the wall. So this is, again, a reasonable assumption that our heat flow will be proportional to the difference between the temperatures and uh, inversely proportional to the thickness of the wall. Now, obviously, we need some kind of a coefficient of proportionality. Now, we also have to put the minus sign because the heat goes opposite to the x, and that might actually be something which we can call the rate of the uh, heat flow, or there is a good uh, word called flux, heat flux. This is the flow of the heat which goes through the unit of area during the unit of time and it's reasonable to assume this particular dependency on the difference between the temperature and the length and the width of the wall. Now this actually gives you um, 
the whole wall basically um, conductivity. Now, if the wall is um, made of the same material, then obviously it should be the same on each slice of the wall, because the the, the heat is uh, is going through. Uh, slices of the wall from this place to this place so first it goes to a thin layer which is close to this one then the next thin layer then the next thin layer etc etc so if we will break this wall into slices like this for each slice let's say from X to X plus Delta X I will probably have to have x plus delta x minus x and the width, the thickness of the slice is delta x and that would be my, not my average, but exact flux, heat flux at slice at the distance x from the, from the left side why is it necessary? Well, because the wall might not be uh, of the same material. So in some places it will be a little bit more conductive. Let's say, I don't know, cement is more conductive than brick or something like this. I don't know. But anyway, this gives you exact um, heat flux at any position within the wall. So if you have some kind of a material which separates one temperature from another temperature, then based on your position, you can find what's the um, uh, heat flux at this point, at this point, at this point, as long as you have temperature at every point. So as the temperature goes, you can calculate. <clears throat> so all you need is basically the function T of X. Temperature as the, uh, at the slice uh, on a distance x from the left side. Now, to make it more palatable, let me go to an example. Completely unrelated to this, but related logically. If you will consider uh, a, a river, which goes along a straight line, um, along a, 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 a homogeneous um, slope down, well, obviously, if you have the level at one point, this is the level of the river at one point, and this is the level over the sea level, let's say, of another point. So there is a difference here, right? This difference in the position, uh, geographical position of the river um, relative to the sea level uh, is is basically the reason why the why the river flow, flow flows down the um, down this slope, right? So the difference in the levels above the sea is the reason why the river flows. Now that's exactly similar to the difference between the temperatures. So I would like to say that the the height of this point above the sea level minus height of this is actually similar to the difference between the temperature which we have. Now, if the same difference is on a shorter distance, let's say, now, which river goes faster? This one or this one? Well, obviously this one. Now, if this one is very far then the river will be very, very quietly going. But if this is a close, then the difference between the heights above the sea level will be on a shorter distance and the water will almost fall down, right? So, that actually is why we have this in the denominator. So this distance is definitely affects the flow of the river. The greater the distance, the slower the river. So the situation with temperature and the distance here is very much similar 
to this situation with river flows. Now, what if it's not really a constant slope with the same angle? What if a river goes like this and then like this? Now, this will be faster and this will be slower, right? So it all depends on the um, uh, function which is if the height is a function of this x this is x and this is height then obviously it's the derivative of the h uh, function h which is tangential line right which basically determines the speed of the uh, of the river the flow the intensity of the flow so it's very much like this case with the temperature so the different levels of the water in the river is analogous to the different temperatures and the distance on which this difference is stretched is actually analogous to the width of the wall so everything is the same now if the material of the wall is different our temperature will also be not a uh, okay let me just go one more step here this is d oh, one more thing this is equals to minus k d okay why did they do this well obviously i have to if i if i if i would like to measure exactly at certain position i have to make my slice um, thinner and thinner so that's why we have to go through the limit well I shouldn't really put equal sign it's actually an arrow here as delta x goes to zero obviously so it goes to a derivative at point x and the point x is where we are measuring our uh, flux heat flux same thing here it all depends on the derivative of a f a h of x by x where h is the height of the river or river bottom whatever relative to um, the sea level okay so what have we actually determined um, we have determined the dependency of the heat flux from the function which is a dependency of the temperature on the distance from the beginning from the source of energy or the, the recipient of energy or whatever and this k what is this k well it's a characteristic of of the material the wall obviously has one conductivity and uh, if it's some some other if it's a metal for instance it obviously would be faster why, for instance, we don't really do um, the wall uh, made of metal? Why do we have to insulate it? Well, so because the metal will, will just transfer the energy from room to outside cold air much faster, and we don't really need this, right? Uh, if we will insulate it, then it will be much slower. So what if we will insulate it and we will put something like this this and something in between so this will be higher conductivity but this will be very lower conductivity how the temperature would change well from a high temperature it will relatively fast go through this high conductivity um, uh, part of the wall then it will go much slower because this coefficient will be significantly um, lower and then again faster so it's again like the um, like the river going fast then maybe slow and then fast again exactly the same thing so you can really view this river model as a very good model actually for the flow of um, the heat from from the warm to the cold place and finally what I can say is that this is called a Fourier uh, formula for thermal conductivity and this is the definition of the um, uh, conductivity coefficient of different um, of different materials. So we can, if we measure the conductivity of each material, then knowing 
how the temperature is go is going within this material then you will get your uh, heat flux now it, it, obviously if t of x is gradually changing from air to room so if it's like a linear function of x then the uh, the derivative will be constant, right? If this is a linear function of x, the derivative will be constant, which means that the flux will be constant. But if you have a situation like this with insulation in between, then obviously it will be constant during this, then it will be constant but different during the next um, uh, layers, and then another one at the end. So it all depends on how this wall is constructed. Um, now, the coefficients uh, of um, uh, conductivity are obviously known, they're experimentally obtained, and uh, it's all available in the books. Now, what if I would like to know how much uh, heat actually I lose in the room? Well, I have to really have the area of this wall, obviously, and multiply q of x times a and that would be my uh, amount of heat energy which is going through the wall through the entire wall a is the area of the wall right uh, during the unit of time and again if you need it during the uh, certain time interval you have to multiply it by time but this is how you can calculate how much energy, for instance, you need to heat up the room. Because you know the temperature of the room, you know the temperature of outside air, um, you know the area of the wall which goes from the room to, um, to the outside um, air, and you know the material, you know the uh, width of the wall. I mean, it all can be calculated using the only thing which you really need is um, material uh, and its conductivity uh, from which the wall is made all right now this is um, the lecture which i have uh, also uh, complemented with rather long textual explanation um, almost everything whatever i'm just saying is exactly reflected in the text for this lecture. So I do recommend you to um, to read it a a as a text. Um, it's probably smoother when, than when I'm talking about this. Um, but in any case, it's very important to understand the concept of heat flux or thermal flux or flow rate of the heat. And again, this analogy with the water flowing from the higher uh, level to the lower level is, is very useful in this case for understanding of how the whole thing actually is, is made. And again, this is the Fourier's law of uh, thermal conductivity is very important for calculations of different um, uh, heat flows whenever we need it for construction or whatever. Okay, that's it for today. Thank you very much and good luck.